So the other day, I was on Urban Outfitters' website. I was checking out the renewal slash vintage section, looking for any gems that I have not been able to find at the thrift store and see if I can just purchase them online instead of buying them at the thrift store because they're still secondhand, they're still vintage, so it's still the same thing. But as I started to browse more and more through their section of vintage slash renewal clothing, I started to notice that most items were men's clothing from the thrift store items that I see every single day at the thrift store. So I thought, you know, instead of spending $49 for a button-up shirt, I could spend $350 and make the same shirt. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to make some Urban Outfitter dupes from the renewal slash vintage section. So I'm really excited for this. So let's get into the thrift flip. Okay, so when I was browsing on the Urban Outfitters website, I came across a few items that were really easy to make. So we're going to start off with a simple one. This one is the item we're going to be doing first. It is the Urban Renewal Recycled Frayed Edge Denim Shirt. That is a long title and they are charging $49 for it. So, uh, yeah, like I, yeah, it's a little pricey. Not everyone can afford a $49 shirt like that. So we're going to try to make it for a few dollars so I went to the thrift store and I found this denim button-up shirt from the men's section I believe it was like three dollars or three fifty or four dollars it was really really reasonable it was not fifty dollars for the shirt so I found this it is a size large men so it's nice and oversized as you can see in the photo it is very oversized on the model so you're not looking for something that's super fitted or anything like I guess you could do you want a fitted one you know that's great too but there should be a lot of these in your local thrift store so I don't think you'll have a hard time finding one so we're gonna thrift flip this one and we're gonna crop it just like the photo and yeah it's it's gonna take two seconds so yeah okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this on to see where I want it cropped because I do not want to have it too short well I'm gonna it's better have it too long at the beginning and then you can keep cropping it to get the perfect length but the worst you can do is crop it too short so I'm gonna put it on here and kind of figure out where I want it I'm kind of lazy I'm not gonna take my Sweater off, so button one up because I'm being major lazy today. So I would like it probably around here, kind of where my jeans hit, just above my belly button, probably around here. So I'm gonna cut it just below this button here. So in between here, I'm gonna crop it. I'm gonna take a safety pin and I'm just gonna pin it here so I know where I'm cutting it about here. There we go. And now I have it marked. So now, next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut it. And here's the shirt. That was like the easiest thing ever. Um, you can tell that it's like kind of really cut across kind of a sharp and I want it to be more frilled like the photo. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this into the dryer I'm gonna leave it at this length right now. I might crop it a bit more, but you know, you could just like pull it back a little bit if you wanted it a bit shorter and then it's longer in the back. So I'm gonna go do that. And then after the dryer, it should look pretty close to the photo. Okay, and the next one we're gonna be recreating is something that I thought was really cute, but I also thought it was super, super simple. Once again, something not too difficult. It is this one. It is called the Urban Renewal Vintage Henley Shirt. Henley, I, mean, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, I'm assuming, but yeah. It is just a cropped, shirt that is sewed at the bottom so technically you could just crop it like the last one and have a frayed edge if you want but because this material looks kind of like a stretchy or a cotton or something i'm not sure how it's going to fray so i am personally going to sew the bottom of it i went to the thrift store and i found this one that is very similar this one is obviously a different texture of the fabric but it is the same type of thing where it's just a simple button up this was also in the men's section so i think they're just going to the thrift store and buying men's clothes and then just cropping them but who knows, anyways. I got this one for 250 and I really like the color. It's a similar color to that one. You don't really need to have that color or anything, but we're gonna do the same technique where we are gonna be cropping it and sewing the bottom and making a $44 shirt. And I personally love this shirt, but it is a little bit long and I don't love tucking a whole bunch of stuff into my clothing. So when I saw that one on Urban Outfitters, I was like, that's a really good idea just to kind of give it a nice clean look. So it doesn't look like you just cropped it. It is a nice finished look. So the shirt might look like it's actually supposed to be like that, but it's not. It is from the men's section from the thrift store. So we're going to go do that. I'm just going to measure out how short I want it. Again, I probably want it around my belly button just because I like it just above here, I don't like it too cropped. I 
I prefer just around kind of like where the belt would go. So I got my safety pin here and I'm just gonna kind of measure where I want it to go. So probably, probably about here. I'm gonna pin it and there we go. We're gonna be taking that much off, but for this one, we're actually not gonna be cutting it right there. You're gonna wanna cut it probably about like, I don't know, an inch and a half, two inches below because we want to take it up and sew it backwards. So yeah, I'll show you that in the next step, but there we go, first step done. So again, this step's pretty simple. All I'm doing is I'm cutting about one to a half, two inches below where I have the pin there marked and just trying to cut the straightest line I possibly can. After that, I'm grabbing my little ironing board and I'm just folding it over once and then twice and then I'm putting a pin there and then iron it down a little bit so it's just a little bit flatter for when I go and sew it. I'm cheating a little bit by doing like two folds of folding the fabric and then folding it once more instead of doing it two steps where you fold the fabric all the way around, iron it, and then you fold it again. If that all makes sense, if not, you can just keep watching me fold and pin the fabric. It is super simple, but it does take a little bit of time, so I'm gonna fast forward this. So after I was done pinning that all together, I jumped on my sewing machine and I just started sewing the bottom of the shirt. In the actual photo of the Urban Outfitters, they use a serger, which I do not have, which is more commercial use, but we are doing it the old fashioned way. Or not really, but the way I taught in school. So yeah, I'm just sewing the bottom of the shirt and then that's it. But maybe it's fine that you are so hard. And the final thriplet that we're going to be creating is these pair of Levi jeans that Urban Outfitters has on their website for $98. They are the Urban Renewal Recycled Levi's Tapestry Cuff Blue Jean. <sighs> that's, a, that's a long title, but I thought these were absolutely adorable when I saw them in the vintage slash renewable section. I thought it was such a neat idea of actually just taking, you know, tapestry fabric and putting them at the bottom of Levi jeans. I thought that was so adorable and it just kind of gives, you know, a little extra flair to the Levi jeans. So I'm super excited to recreate these jeans. It doesn't look too difficult because you're just putting fabric at the bottom. You're not really re-sewing anything or really recreating anything too crazy. So this one should be simple as well. So the materials I'm using to make these jeans is obviously a pair of Levi jeans. These are 550. They fit me good so I don't need to do any really anything to it other than having the bottom and putting the fabric on there. And then for the tapestry, I ended up finding a jacket that was kind of like the tapestry that you can see in the photo. I feel a little guilty by cutting this jacket up, but I will be using the fabric in another thrift flip. So this jacket will be you know, used for good purposes. It's not gonna be just ruined, so. Overall, I believe I spent $5 on the jacket, and then the jeans were, I wanna say, another $5, so $10 total for this thrift flip. Regular 98 on Urban Outfitters, so I think that's pretty good. So I just put the pair of jeans that I am gonna be thrift flipping, I put them on myself because I wanna see how I want to hem them because they are a bit longer than I would like. I like them a little bit shorter, just about the ankle. So right here, I'm just kind of measuring of the fit of them. I'm just folding it, you know, standing up straight. You can see how it actually sits and then going down and adjusting it and just repeating that step until I get a length that I really like. And then once I got the length that I wanted, I just put the safety pin into the bottom of the pants so I had it marked off. And I only did this on one leg because you know, they'll be the same on both legs, but that is it. That is super simple. That's how I'm gonna know where I wanna cut it. Okay, so the next step, we are taking my tapestry jacket and we are just measuring it against the pants. I'm trying to find the widest part of the jacket so it matches up nicely with the pants. I'm just trimming it here. I'm gonna be trimming it longer than it will show on the pants because you have to, you know, adjust for the actually the seam that we will be sewing on the pants and the bottom, if that makes sense. So make it a tad longer than you're expecting it to be on the pants. And right here, I'm just taking the other side and I'm just measuring it so they're pretty even. After that, I'm gonna go and trim it just so they're perfectly cut straight or they're cut straight. I'm not like 
being super, super accurate this. I'm making it kind of rough, but that's okay. You don't have to be crazy, crazy intricate with this. And then here I am just taking the tapestry and putting it on top and measuring it out and seeing where I want to actually crop the jeans. As you can see, the tapestry is a bit smaller in the width. So that is okay. I will show you how you can fix that if your jeans are a little bit wider than your actual tapestry. And now I'm just making the jeans inside out so now we can start pinning the tapestry to the bottom of each pant leg. So you want to make sure that your tapestry is also inside out when you before you start pinning it. And right now I'm just pinning the front of the fabric on both sides and just pinning it together. Pinning it so the top of the fabric are aligned on both the pant and the tapestry jacket. When I started pinning, I went from the seam pants and the tapestry jacket. I know this is a little confusing, but I started there so they kind of align. So when you look down the pants that you see the seam all the way down from there. And then I just worked my way inwards. And then this is where I am going to be showing you how I actually made it so it fit and that you don't get it bunched up because the pants is a little bit wider than my actual tapestry sleeve or whatever you want to call that so now that you can see that i have it all pinned and then i have that little bit of excess fabric right on the seam there on the outside and now i'm just gonna be taking a sewing machine and sewing from the bottom where it lines up perfectly with the tapestry and then all the way up to the seam upwards and just trying to make it nice and simple and not too jagged or anything but just a nice line connecting them so it actually looks very nice when you're wearing the pants and then i'm just giving it a quick trim so it doesn't have too much fabric inside the pant leg and then once I was done that I am just folding the pants backwards and they're gonna be facing frontwards but be careful so you don't like jab yourself with the pin and then once I have that I'm just folding the tapestry over top of the pants so you can see it just like that and this is how we're gonna be sewing it together now and now I'm just sewing it all together and make sure you don't run over those pins because that would be very bad you don't want to break a needle so make sure you take the pins out one at a time before you run over them and I am just sewing it pretty much half inch close the seam to the bottom of the fabric and there you go it's pretty simple it's not much to it just doing a straight line and then once you got both sides all sewn up, we're gonna hem the bottom. So what I'm doing is I'm doing the same technique what I did for the last long sleeve where I folded the fabric and then folded it again and then pinned it. And that's the same thing we're gonna be doing here. So I'm just repeating that step for both pant legs. And that is all, we are done all three for flips. So let's take a look at how they turned out. Down, yeah. I've been feeling so, I've been feeling so down, yeah. Can you tell me why, can you tell me why I'm down, yeah. No friends of mine, no friends of mine around, yeah. Now I'm thinking now, now I'm thinking now. The cottage blows. Yeah, I wanna try myself inside the juice. Yeah, you know I keep on running from the truth. Is that not? I'm just a lonely fool. Now, when I drive around, don't feel it all. Why it's getting colder when the sun comes out? Might just waste away, don't know. that is all for today i really hope that you enjoyed today's video and if you did let me know down in the comments if you want me to do a series on thrifting urban dupes or thrift flopping urban dupes that was really fun to go through the website and figure out things that i wanted to make and then obviously show you how i made them if you do like it let me know down in the comments and i would love to make more and if you did like this video don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also follow me on instagram and yeah, that's it. So I want to say thank you once again for watching today's video and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.